What's up and welcome to another episode of Gizmo Slip Tech. Today we're looking at the Onboard Electric Skateboard. Is this the best board that money can buy for under $450? Today I'll be answering that question. I'll be comparing it with the Evolve Carbon GT and the Meepo V2. We'll be taking a look at the value, taking a look at the controllers right here. Voila, the range of the Onboard and my overall impression. That said, Onboard did approach me and asked me to review this. They did send this board out to me for free and they have provided a coupon code for $25 off and that does help support the channel just a little bit if you do decide to use that coupon code and I'm just saying that in all fairness and honesty without further ado let's hop right into this review Okay, so I've got a lot of miles on my own board and I haven't had any major issues. And I also rode it downtown for a little over four miles and I had a fantastic experience. Great acceleration, great braking, no lapses in the controller to skateboard connection the entire time I have used it. And I've probably got about a hundred-ish miles on it now, probably about seven full charges approximately. And I have been really impressed with its overall functionality and reliability thus far. When I first got it, there was a slight clicking noise that went away shortly after. Wow, this is epic. I talked to the onboard representative. They said it was probably just glue in the motor area and after a little while, it just went away. Unboxing this thing wasn't bad, but when I took the sticker off the middle, it had a little bit of glue residue left over and that was annoying to clean off as well. That glue residue is still on here just a little bit. I haven't got it to be perfectly clean, but I think it's just as good as it's gonna get at this point. Overall, I really like this deck. It's a very high quality deck. It's got some bounce and spring to it, a lot more so than the Meepo board. The Meepo board is very stiff. It has two layers of bamboo in it for extra spring and it feels very good. It seems to be holding together excellently. Let's talk about the highlight of using this board and that is the controller. Here is the Meepo controller and here is the own board controller. One thing I like about the Meepo controller is it's got this finger hole. Extra nice because it's not going to slip out of your hand. But the thing about the Meepo controller is it has very little travel distance. You can do partial throttles with the Meepo. It's just very hard because it's so sensitive and there's a very short travel distance. The own board on the other hand has a much longer travel distance and it's got a more gradual spring plus the power curve distribution they must have some kind of more sensitive sensor in here because you can get very gradual acceleration and braking with the own board quite frankly you can get just as good acceleration and braking out of the own board as you can with the Evolve Carbon GT. So this is the Evolve R2 controller. You've got a trigger here, which is nice for acceleration, very gradual. And then the brake is also very gradual. And it's nice that they're separated. At the same time with the Evolve, right off the start, it can feel a little bit jumpy. Now, when you compare the power of the Meepo and the Onboard, they have nearly identical acceleration and braking speeds. I, honestly, it feels like you're riding the same board with a better acceleration curve with the Onboard. Almost everyone that I gave the Meepo controller to ended up basically jumping off the board because the power throughput on it is just so sensitive. Now on the own board controller, there is three power modes. There's a beginner mode with a maxed cap speed at a much lower speed. There's a medium and a high performance mode. I just kept it in high performance mode literally all the time. Now I do think one downside to this long board build is that there is no tail. If you prefer a kick tail, you'll just have to go with a different board than this one. Overall, this one's pretty manageable, especially with the handle. Both the Meepo and the own board have this handle, but it makes it really useful for quick trips to the store, carrying it around. It definitely is a lot better than the Evolve board, which is just a monstrosity to try to take with you inside anywhere. Now, something else that's fantastic about the own board is that you can get a Samsung six or four amp hour battery in it. And the great thing about these batteries is that they have very minimal voltage sag. What is voltage sag, you ask? Well, voltage sag is when you start wearing down the battery, its total power output is significantly reduced. The great thing about these Samsung batteries is they have very minimal voltage sag until you get to about 30% or less. And I found this to be very true of the own board as well as the Meepo. The Evolve board actually had significant voltage sag. When you get about 50% battery life, you are just not going to be able to go to the same speeds or climb the same level of hills. And the crazy thing to me is I didn't notice any voltage sag until I hit the nine mile mark, which I think is just fan 
freaking tastic. You've got this readout right here, which tells you a pretty accurate estimate of how much percentage you have left in the battery. So that's pretty handy. Now the Meepo does have a similar battery bar. This is only a four level indicator though. The onboard has a percentage indicator, which is just gonna be a lot more precise. And I think that's a lot more usable. In a very real sense, even though the onboard and Meepo are less than one quarter of the cost of the Evolve board, they are still just as functional, if not more so, so in an average street use scenario. Now Onboard does claim that it is a waterproof board, which I think is a little bit generous most likely because I mean, any kind of wood deck board, you don't really wanna take out in the rain. It will end up absorbing some of that water and weakening over time, as well as when you're riding it, and if you're riding it rough all the time through streets that are bumpy, you're gonna end up with little cracks maybe in the plastic, and that is gonna make it very susceptible to water in general. And on top of that, we're dealing with rubber plasticky wheels here, so I would not advise riding this in the rain, but I did have to splash through a couple of surprise puddles, and it handled that just fine. It did not malfunction or have any issues that I'm aware of. When you compare the Meepo and the Onboard with the Evolve, the Evolve board uses a belt-driven system, and the belt-driven system can be nice in certain situations, but I much prefer the built-in hub motors of the Onboard and the Meepo boards. And that's because the built-in hub motors allow you to coast and maintain momentum. When you let go of the throttle with the Evolve board, you're gonna immediately start slowing down because those belt motors are gonna be dragging on the wheels, slowing you down, almost instantly. Now, when I compare these three skateboards, the Evolve GT is fantastic for what it is. It has those large wheels, it allows you to go over a lot bigger bumps, have more confidence in your ride, and have up to an 18 mile range. Whereas these two right here, they're smaller, they feel more like a traditional longboard. They're gonna have a little bit bumpier ride. When you compare the Meepo and Ownboard, what it comes down to is the Ownboard has a more responsive gradual acceleration and braking, while still maintaining a similar level of power Power and range. And since they have nearly identical price points, I just have to recommend the Ownboard over the Meepo in this situation. So that's my review of the Ownboard electric skateboard. Let me know what you guys think based off my review, which of these three boards would you choose? I'll have a link down below if you'd like to pick one of these up with that $25 off coupon. If you click the link, it'll automatically be included. And if you go to the website outside of that link, the coupon code is just Gizmo Slip. Anyway guys, that's it for this episode of Gizmo Slip Tech. Don't forget to check out the mega giveaway that's going on right now. I'll have a link in the top pinned comment down below. We'll see you next time. Brandon, out.